Hi, everyone. It's Becky Belote here from Newport News, Virginia. And um, today I'm going to show you double page spread. I was inspired by uh, another idea that I saw from one of my teammates the other day and um, decided to, to kind of uh, go in a little different direction with it. But um, but um, I like it and it uses your border maker cartridges and your um, straight trimmer. OK, um, so let's just go ahead and jump into it. Um, dogs are quiet. We've got to take advantage of those things. But I do appreciate you watching. Um, follow me on YouTube if you're not already at Scrapbook with Becky. And I do have a blog that has lots of page layout ideas. However, I haven't done one for a while. I apologize. And that is also at scrapbookwithbecky.com. So anyways, thanks for watching. I really appreciate you. And um, let me just change my screen a little bit and we will make a page, double page spread. All right, so um, what I am going to do, I'm gonna work with uh, a couple of two base pieces. Now these can be cardstock, they can be whatever you want really. Um, this is from Q the Blue, crazy pretty. Um, wish I had brighter light. <laughs> I always say that. Look, I have bright light from the window right here. That's my bright light. <laughs> All right, um, let me see what happens if I turn this a little bit. Not much. So we'll just go with it. All right, so we're going to use this as base papers. And um, this is a contrasting color. And um, I'm going to stack them. And I've taught this skill before. But there's a reason why I'm showing it again today. So I'm going to cut um, off a quarter inch frame all the way around. So I'm stacking my two pieces of paper to kill two birds with one stone. And I am a bird lover. So that is just a figure of speech. I will be killing no birds. All right. So I'm lining it up to the half inch mark. And then I'm going to cut from the half inch mark here to the, this is 12 inches long. So it'll be to the 11 and a half inch down here. And you can't see them, um, but on our trimmer, they do have, markings like I can clearly see that that's a half inch mark. I have extended a, a black sharpie line over to make it even easier. And then um, the 11 and a half is right down here. So I'm going to start at that one and go up to that one. Because it's two pieces of paper, you want to make sure it is cut all the way through. Um, this also works with cardstock, um, but then you really need to make sure it goes through. I did that just before this and it does work but you have to go over it several times because of its thickness. All right, so back to the half inch, down to the 11 and a half inch. And yep, cutting perfectly good. And then I'm gonna flip it, go, go to the half inch. And you're gonna cut from the half inch down to the 11 and a half inch. And we're going to rotate one last time. Now, keep in mind, if you wanted a bigger margin, um, you would line up to the one inch and then you go to the one inch down to the 11 inch. So whatever you line up here is what the numbers are that you use over and over and over again on all four cuts. All right. So this right here. Last time we used this piece. This time we're not. I'm going to put this aside, but we're not going to throw it away because that's another double page spread. And then we're going to do what we just did another time. All right. So now I'm going to take it to the half inch. If we took off a half inch twice, a half inch here and a half inch here off of a 12 inch piece of paper, you know, hold on, I mean, I mean, before I leave my train of thought, the half inch is really easy up here. We have taken off one inch from 12 inches. So now it's at 11 inch. So now I'm going to go down to the 10 and a half inch. So there's my 11. There's my 10. We're going to go right there. In fact, this nice prominent bar marks that one for you. You've got a nice prominent bar here. These are all half inch increments. So it really is easier than it looks. All right. Then we're going to do that again. Line it up to the half inch. Put that little bar on the half inch there, go down here to that bar, do it again and again. Half inch, 
I like these half inch borders. I think they're perfect. And last one. You can also line up to the cut line. Once you've gone this far, we've got cut lines on both sides that are really easy to see. All right. So this time what I'm going to use, and it looks like I missed it. No problem. Just snip that off. I thought it was perforated. All right. So um, this I'm going to use too. So I'm going to set that aside just briefly. And I'm going to lay this down and show you how pretty this looks. Okay, so it's not on the edge this time. It, it kind of gives a picture frame look, doesn't it? Super pretty. All right, and then I'm going to get my border maker system out, and I am going to cut using, I'm going to use the florist fine because that's what I've already pre-cut for you today. All right, so I put my paper in there. I pulled the little tray back after I lined up the paper, lining up this notch to this notch, and then to every notch along it. There are six of them. And after I do that, I'm going to cut this at three quarters inch. I like three quarters inch. It's not going to work with every single border maker cartridge, but it does work with this one. All right. Three quarters in. All right. And I already pre-cut several of them for you. I want you to do four of those, okay? And then um, you can decide where you want to put them. Um, but what I think I'm going to do put them over. All right, so what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna snip, I'm gonna, um, this we decided was 11 inches. So we need to cut off an inch. I'm using my mat here to determine where that 11th inch is. My 11 is this end, depending on how you where you're, cut your mats. So that's beautiful. Cut off. I actually, I'm going to do my other three at the same time so you don't get bored. Plus, I have a coffee appointment with a friend for my networking group very soon. So I can't lollygag. Let's see here. I'm just going to snip them all. All right, then what I'm gonna do, also gonna use my board to center it in the space. Just gonna put repo on this. This one is kind of fragile and repo is gonna be your best adhesive for this one. And I'm just gonna center it up here um, between the half marks. Oops, I think I'm gonna go upwards because the, all of the pretty, uh, Pretty part of this is up. Gave my dog a bone. Um, so he is outside barking because he knew he wants to come in. Thought it would keep him busy. You probably can't hear him. I feel a little bit bad that he's barking, wanting to come in. But I'll be not long. He'll be okay. He just needs to eat his bone. Whoops. Did I forget to cut this one? How could that have happened? Looks like I did. This one escaped the cut. All right, I'm just lining it up there. All right, and I think I'm going to do it at the bottom as well. Same thing. Just go ahead and use your measurements down here. I love our mats because you can see the numbers even when your paper is completely filling it up. So it's really bigger than 12 inch, which is nice. Again, I'm going to do it upside down, going to the half inch marks on each side. 
because that's what I cut off. I know that's the proper length. And then we'll do it one last time. Here's my mat. I'm going to go from a half inch upside down with this border to the other half inch. All right. And then what I'm going to do is put some adhesive on this. Both sides of this is really pretty. I think I'm going to use this side. Just put a little bit of adhesive all the way around. This reminds me, I have y'all, do y'all watch that TikTok video that has that girl that makes these stupid recipes that are really just so stupid? It reminds me of her pouring sprinkles on stuff. It's like she always overdoes, but you really do kind of overdo with your tape. Kind of do is kind of go over the edge of that guy. I'm going to put it right on that half inch. I think I'm going to have to go down a little bit deeper to make it match. That can peek out there. Do you like it? Is that beautiful? So instead of sticking this down, because I know that you know that I can do it or you can do it, I'm going to show you what we're going to do with the rest of this. So what I would do now is take whatever color you want. I'm going to go ahead and stick with this navy blue. And I'm going to cut um, one, two, three, four. Actually, I'm going to want another piece of hard stock. All right, so I'm going to finish this this one piece up that I have. Actually, I, you know what? I was wondering about that. It's not really the right uh, height, so I'm not going to use it. I'm going to cut four inches. I'm going to cut four inches. And then, of course, this one is four inches. I'm going to stack them. That's three. And what that means is I need to push really hard to make sure that cuts. You start to feel it break away. All right. And then what I'm going to do is take these guys. Got enough. I should have enough here for um, both pages. I need four for that side. And I have four for this side. And I'm just going to carefully adhere them, leaving as much space or as little. You can go like that big if you want to. You've got plenty of space to work with. Um, I'm gonna go like that. This one actually has grid lines on it, which makes it really easy to line up. Wow, I didn't think that through, but that is lovely. So what I'm basically doing is I'm leaving two whole grids all the way around. Genius. I love those grid papers, don't you? Really make measuring easy. A lot of our papers now have one side that has those grids on it. Really helps with measuring. Should be a square. All right. And so now what I'm going to do is I'm going to cut off. I'm going to put my grid line. I don't even know if y'all can see the lines on this paper, but there are. And I can line that line up that is the grid line with my cutting groove. Um, and if unsure, you can use this little guy to make sure that's accurate. And so I know that my spacing is good here. Do it again over here. All right. Now look at how pretty it looks here. Isn't that nice? All right. So. Um, another thing that I wanted to show you, um, these letters, these, um, they're kind of ombre, the colors and the letters. No, you're not seeing things that are like that. I went ahead and made a title. Last week, um, I showed you how to have titles spread across a double page spread. Um, and people were asking me questions about that. So I'm going to show you. It's not hard. Um, you can put it on the diagonal um, to make it a perfect, you know, whatever. But quite frankly, it doesn't matter. You just want to make sure you're not cutting through any letters. You do need to angle it. If, 
you know, I have to angle it, but I'm going to angle it because I think it looks super cool. And you can use this diagonal line to get a really specific cut. It doesn't matter. Just throw it at an angle. Make sure there's no letters in your space. And then what you'll see is let's pretend like this side is already done. Let's make it look pretty. Let's put it side by side. And then what you can do, you can make, make them go across the page for extra decoration like that. All right, so it's a great way to, to make a title fit if you have a lot of pictures on the page. All right, um, so this is one of many border cartridges that will work with this. I tried um, the sailboat and the sailboat is one of my faves. Oh my goodness, got my nails done and now I can't pick up anything. Don't you hate that? Um, and they really needed to be done. They were so nasty. Um, but um, did I stick that? Oh yeah, I did stick that down. Let's assume that I didn't stick it down. Um, this one, you almost can't go underneath. You almost have to build on top. You would still want to snip some off. But isn't that pretty? Just going on the top of it. Um, if you go under, it's going to hide a lot of the detail of the sailboat. So this one, you would have to treat it different. Um, the circle chain is one of my favorites. And I have to mention it because it's on while supplies last. This one's going to look good over or under. Look at how pretty it looks if you just kind of let it sneak a peek out of the top. Okay, so that's kind of a different look, isn't it? So you can get all kinds of different looks depending on how far you want it up or down. Like it could just be a little humpty hump hump or it could be a half of a half a circle like a rainbow, all kinds of looks. Isn't that nice? And, and again, you just snip off what you don't need. All right, so I wanted to show you that you have border maker cartridges that this will work with. All right, but what I also want to tell you, remember those, remember the first, I want to go grab it without tearing it up. Um, remember the first ones that we made? I want to show you that you can take that and use it for another concept. So this is the big outer one. So it fills all the way to the outer edge like we did last week. And then we came through with the new, um, I don't know what it's called. It's brand new and I have the box somewhere. What is it called? It's called Citrus Slice. Um, because it does lemons, limes, oranges. But when I saw it, I thought doilies. I thought watermelons. I thought um, flowers. So it gets all kind of looks. You trick people into seeing what it is you want them to see. And in this one, I wanted it to be kind of doily. Um, so I did it in white to kind of trick the eyes. And I love it. Now this, um, I use the National Scrapbook Day line. So the background paper here is National Scrapbook Day paper. This white print that has these little sunshines on it is in the accessory pack that's in the National Scrapbook Day bundle. And then I mix this with um, Island Waters Totally Tonals um, because the colors and the sayings did what I wanted them to. Um, I did plop this right in the middle. And if I had a four by four picture handy, do I? Oh, that'll ruin this one. Let's do this one. Um, if I had, um, let me take a four by four picture. Yes, it's, it's my dogs. All right. Actually, I want it to be more like three and a half. So let me take a half an inch off here and another half inch off there. All right, and then what you can see is I can plop that right in that space, even though that's there. And the reason why I can is I have popped it with foam pads and I've only popped it in the middle, all right? Um, it, it's gonna be enough to hold that up. And then when I go and put my pictures in, it's not a problem. Yeah. Um, that's for those of you that build your pages before the pictures, okay? Um, so anyways, is that cool? So there's, it doesn't matter where I put it, it's going to fit nicely under there. So in case you're wondering. All right. So same exact concept, this 
um, is the outer frame that was trash. And then I showed you how, you know, on the other one, we had the, the border pointed up. On this one, I have one up, one down. So you can really kind of play with it. My last one I did with Q the blue. And I did the same thing, but this time I let my border be on the side. So this was the inside one. In other words, I cut off the out, saved it, and then I have this facing out. Um, and put these little, uh, the Q the Blue has these beautiful little um, epoxy dots. And I actually put two of them. I layered them. They're really thin and flat, which a lot of you like. And um, I went ahead and laid, I did, did one on top of the other. Um, this is a matte from Q the Blue. Um, so again, if, if, if instead of having four matching ones, if you wanna throw a mat in, um, just grab one of your mats that you wanted. This one even already has the lines on it and make it a four by four like you did the paper. And then you could put that down instead, probably before you put the sticker dots. All right, so those mats are gonna come in handy and that's what I did here. And then I did some popping here. I did some embellishments from the embellishment pack. Cue the blue is beautiful, by the way. All right, so that is all I've got for today. I hope that you like these ideas. Sorry, I'm running a little late, um, but I really appreciate you watching. And um, just to let you know, um, the project recipe, the NFD page spread out that I had, um, reach out to your advisor and um, on her website for those. Um, our company rewards us for selling at least 15 of those. So you can really help your advisor um, by spreading them out. Um, I do lots of double page spreads with my personal shop space and not just the ones that the shows. Those are always going to be beautiful. But I still want, and it's a small line. It's not as big as some of, of our other lines. And so um, I'm take to get all of project recipes, and that will help your advisor get free things. They give us a, a whole box of um, free, um, like things that we can use, prices and stuff. Come back to you guys. So thank you for supporting our sales team, free memories. Um, if you don't have an advisor, I'd love for you to with me again, I am Becky Below, E C K I E B E L O T E, and you can create a memory.